Welcome to How Do You Drew? This is a Drew Barrymore podcast brought to you by thedrewzium.com. And sponsored by our friends at Positive Medium. I'm Anne. And I'm Ashley. Hello. <laughs> it's funny. I realized the way I said that it was like Musical. setting you up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm Anne. <laughs> with an E. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hi, friend with an E. <laughs> I'm glad you're here with me. <laughs> yes. Oh, I'm not going to be able to follow that up with any kind of rhyme. I'm sorry. Okay, well, let's keep going. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what do we have for follow-ups from our last episode where we talked all about the WJ strike? Yeah, well, thank you, editor, for putting in the um, little update that you did. That was very helpful. Mm-hmm. I think you had to do it twice, right? I did. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so one thing I just want to address, because you know me with the media saying things that's not true and it makes me angry Mm -hmm. so um drew had put up an apology video on her instagram this was Mm -hmm. prior to announcing that the show would stop filming Mm -hmm. she later removed it so we're not going to share it because Mm -hmm. she opted to take it down but there's a bunch of articles going around right now about how apology videos because there's other apology videos from other celebrities going on right now Mm -hmm. And let's just take a moment to note that those are about like rape accusations, which is so on a different level than what Drew's is about. Let's just say that. Yeah. It's very frustrating that they're being compared, but (sighs) let's hear it. But anyway, you know, they're all talking about how, oh, all these apology videos, you have to be bare faced and have a stark background. And it just started really pissing me off because I was like, well, Drew's always makeup free when she's not at work and Mm -hmm. she posts videos all the time like that and Mm -hmm. in the same area. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted specifically to call out the New York Times, which normally I like the New York Times, but they included her in this. And it says, Mm -hmm. these videos appear off the cuff, hair disheveled, faces uncharacteristically makeup free, Eh, wrong. (laughs) <laughs> Weird lighting, but they are likely curated to elicit empathy down to the cozy, intimate locations. Any hint of far more opulent surroundings out of the frame. Uh, okay, it's not to say that Drew does not have a beautiful home, because of course she does. Yeah. But yeah, like uncharacteristically wrong, like exactly like you said. Yeah. And I don't think it was something that she like curated no she no. says in it like I'm trying to do this and just be me yeah well they had this like TikTok person I don't even know how this person is qualified but this is what they had to say about it I think she thought we were going to look at the macrame on the back wall and the striped wallpaper and we connect with her like she's one of the girls <laughs> okay how about we connect with her like one of the girls always how about that's her freaking bedroom so like I'm like, wait a minute, go back four posts on her Instagram. And there she is in the same Same exact setting, not wearing makeup, not apologizing. She's actually mad in that video with media because this is when they were spreading all those stupid lies about her feelings about her mom. Yep. It's the desk in her bedroom. She has a ton of videos that she's taken there and like, it's not curated. Yeah. This is just one (laughs) of those, like, I don't know the phrase, but like either red herring or like you know, straw man argument where it's like, that's like not even the point. Like (laughs) they're literally like, okay, she's not (laughs) genuine. It turns out Drew Barrymore is not genuine. The person that everyone, I don't know. It's, it is. She has macrame in the background. It's all fake. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, we've seen that so many times her bedroom. Like she's shown it so many times. And it's just, Oh my God. But you know, to be fair, we're paying way more attention than anyone else is. Yes, but if you're going to yes. be putting it in the New York times. Yeah. Like just come on. Research. Just scroll research. down a little yeah, bit. Just scroll a little. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. Had to get that off my chest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, And then the, of course, as we all know, she announced they're pausing the show. The public response has been pretty positive. It feels like I think a lot of people are willing to forgive her, which mm-hmm. thank God, because that's just what we want to hear. Yeah. And then there's a whole other side of people coming out of the woodwork who are mad that she didn't stick to her guns <laughs> and keep filming. Uh, I was trying to think of one of those like phrases, like you can't please them all. It's this, that, or the other. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, it's like, if it's not this, it's something else. Yeah. Or... Yeah. But I'm glad that she decided to do what she did. I will say that. Me too. But thank you for the follow-up. Yes, um, I'm glad we addressed it. It's probably, you know, within like a short amount of time going to be like a flash in the pan. Yeah, I hope so. 
I will say that I have seen some also nice things that are sort of like, Hey, yeah, people make mistakes and then they realize it and apologize. Like, that's great. Like, you know, and that's the kind of society that we should want, not the kind where you make a mistake and you apologize and you're dead forever to them. When, especially when it's about something like this, not that I'm saying it's not important, but again, this isn't like what Russell Brand is apologizing for. Of course, it really, really, really depends on what it is, obviously. (laughs) They did not expect, I don't think, the backlash that came. I don't either. I've seen people scoff at that, but I think Drew is a little out of touch with reality. How could she not be? She's been famous since she was seven. And I don't think she has like a really great outside looking in viewpoint. I don't think she realizes how impactful her decisions are as Drew Barrymore. Like, I don't, I think she's just like, I'm just trying to do the right thing for my my staff guys. And then it's like, okay, wait. Yeah. Well, the whole world is looking. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But I think that she, she did the right thing. Like you said, like she, you know, came back and redeemed herself. Hopefully. I mean, yeah. We're still good with her. (laughs) Yeah. A a bit. I mean, I got some reservations. I wish she'd stuck to her guns. (laughs) Just kidding. Can we get into some fun stuff? Let's do it. (laughs) You've got mail. Okay. So I see we've got a fun piece of mail this week. We do. Because we are now such big fans of this podcast. uh, Mm -hmm. Movies that made us gay. Yes. Uh, We talked about it a couple episodes ago. I got you starting to listen to it. I just adore these guys. Um, Well, Pete from one of the co-hosts, he Mm -hmm. left us a review on Apple Podcasts. And the title of this review is We Love Drew Too with a little daisy. (laughs) Oh, perfect. Okay. So Pete said, Anne and Ashley talk about Drew like an old friend, which is perfect because that's the way I feel about her. I just finished episode 23 about SNL 1999, and when I tell you I screamed at the mention of Little Girl Lost. (laughs) (laughs) The podcast I co-host, Movies That Made Us Gay, has covered our share of Drew episodes, and Ashley was so kind to reach out to us with nothing but glowing words about our reviews of Drew movies. What a compliment. I smell a collab. Ooh, dot, dot, dot. I like it. Yeah, I, I smell one too. It smells good. It's, it might be baking right now. It smells like flowers. <laughs> if you know, you know. Yes. Yes, I have been listening to this lately. I think I've listened to all the Drew ones, but there might still oh, be one sweet. more to go. Um, I loved them too. I like they have a really fun sense of humor like I, I'm laughing all the time and a lot in common with us is like yes. another thing where I'm like what how do you you know this thing too you did this too I, I just realized I have not listened to the Donnie Darko episode yet oh okay I don't know why I put that one off What's I know I was like me? do that one first <laughs> I think maybe I went like to the early ones either that way I'm, I've been I've been loving it absolutely loving it um I did just listen to Death Becomes Her episode oh yeah I listened to that one too <laughs> it was great I love that movie me too but yes thank you for the lovely comment thank you for listening and yeah. uh, it's so nice to have um a podcast that we respect so much respect ours like it yeah <laughs> great way of yeah. putting it yeah okay so what did you pull for this week in Drew History Okay, well, I could have pulled this one, which is September 26, 2012, Mm -hmm. and that is when Olive was born, but guess what? That's what our whole episode is going to be about. We are talking about (laughs) Drew and her relationship with being a mom, so we'll get to that in a minute. We sure will. (laughs) But for now, let's go to September 26, 1999. Speaking of SNL, This is when they had their 25th anniversary and it was like a TV special, I guess. Right. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Tons of people there. Like everybody came and was in the audience and there's lots of fun pictures of Drew with Molly Shannon posing in all these cute ways on the red carpet. Yep. Lots of silly pictures. Yes. Very silly. We talked about this once before that Bill Murray hosted it and he sang um, TLC's Waterfalls to Drew in the opening. That's right. We talked about that he might have been like, don't go chasing waterfalls because like Drew was trying to get him for Charlie's Angels. Yeah, I don't, still don't remember where I heard that. I definitely didn't make that up myself, but uh, we don't know if it's true, but I, it's kind of funny to think about. <laughs> yeah, and I know I always mention this, which is only relatable to other collectors, but this, there are a lot of clippings of. That's true. <laughs> so she's wearing this like crocheted, 
shawl poncho kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, she wears one really similar to this in the Ferris wheel scene of Never Been Kissed. (laughs) Oh, and also I think she has another one in a different color. Yes. She wore another one. I think it was to a play that Edward Norton was in. Same year in 99. Yeah. The three shades of blue that Drew's wearing are like totally different shades of blue. Definitely an interesting outfit. (laughs) Yes. We should continue describing it. She's wearing a long sparkly blue dress I mean skirt almost like maybe a dress actually (laughs) yeah it might be a dress and then the shawl that you mentioned in like a darker blue color and then her shoes are like a turquoisey blue high heel (laughs) strappy almost like plastic (laughs) yeah they almost do they almost have like a um a gel gel what did they call yeah jelly Jelly, is that what they're called? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those were so uncomfortable. I know. I had like one pair of like clear, which was so gross because then yep. they just turned yellow. Anyway, this is not a fashion podcast, but we do talk <laughs> a lot about fashion. <laughs> I mean, it's hard not to when our subject is who she is. <laughs> Absolutely. I also have always thought that she looks like, speaking of like makeup free, she's wearing mm. very little makeup and yeah. she's got like, her hair looks very casual. I think she's totally just like self-styled here. Oh yeah. Just thinking about like how much more polished she got years later. This was probably like, oh yeah, she went to the mall and got herself an outfit, you know? <laughs> yeah. So true. <laughs> so cute. What will you do one day when you have your own children? Be the happiest person alive. As we hinted at earlier, we will be talking about Drew and her relationship with motherhood. This is a big one. I feel like we probably could have gone on and on and on and on with this. Um, It's something she talks about a lot, but we did a good job condensing it down to important stuff. Yes, you you, uh, looked through many, many magazines to try to find some quotes her talking about motherhood. And this will be kind of fun to go through, like to talk about it as a relationship with motherhood rather than focusing on the kids. Because as we decided to do, we're kind of out of respect for the daughter's privacy. We're just basically talking about Drew and how she has perceived and um, come into motherhood. Yeah. Like, obviously, Olive and Frankie didn't ask to be famous. (laughs) I mean, (laughs) not Drew didn't either, actually. But yeah, Drew opts to keep them as private as she can. And we would love to respect that decision and kind of follow in her footsteps. So yes, that's how we're going to tackle this. Um, we're also not really going to get into Jade in any way. Uh, <laughs> that could be a whole different episode. Um, yeah, it'd be interesting to do a Jade episode, but so many of our <laughs> other ones are Jade episodes. Yeah, I was just going to say, <laughs> it's come up in so many of our episodes. Drew has said that becoming a mom has made her more empathetic towards Jade, but it really hasn't helped lessen the distance. They have a very complicated relationship. That's for sure. Yep. <laughs> um, so let's let's jump into some quotes. Drew just talking about the idea of motherhood early in her life, starting with a quote from 1995. Um, she said, I never thought I'd have a sense of family until I had my own kids. I want two, a boy and a girl. My daughter will be named Ruby Daffodil. <laughs> <laughs> well, she got halfway to that <laughs> idea, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, halfway to the idea in a couple ways. She didn't yeah. name her daughter Ruby Daffodil, which is such a cute name, by the I way. I know. I do really love that. It's I a... feel like somebody used to use it as their screen name oh, on like, the message board. That feels familiar. Yeah, yeah, what a great idea, too. That's a good screen name idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. I feel like you could name a cat that, and it'd be really cute, too. Oh, I love that. I know. That's a good excuse to get another cat. <laughs> oh, there you go. Um, okay. Also back in our favorite us 1997, when they were talking about Drew wearing the pregnant belly while filming home fries, Drew said it didn't make her feel more like having a baby because she already wanted one so badly. And the writer told her to wait. And she responded, I will wait till the time is right. That could be in a month. It could be in five years. (laughs) And it was a lot longer than that. that. Yes. In 1999, she said, I can't wait to be a mother and be faced with the demons to put the child first and yourself second. All that matters is to protect and love your child. I love that she had that perspective. Yeah. Like knowing it's such a sacrifice. It's also making me laugh because very recently she was kind of bitching about the whole um, airline thing of you put your oxygen mask on first and then your child. Yes. (laughs) And she like, that's did not agree with that at all. 
it's such a strange thing i know anyway i always think of her whenever i'm on a plane and they start talking about that <laughs> i think of her yelling oh, my child's on first <laughs> Let's get into the years right before she decided to have the baby. So I know she said before, like, that was one of the few things she didn't just like jump into, like tattoos and marriage. Like mm-hmm. she never just jumped into having kids. It was always going to be a really thoughtful process for her. Mm-hmm. So she decided to take like a real break in her career and slow down. And she said, especially after a project she'd been working on for a year, quote, disintegrated into thin air. We don't know what that was. I'm so curious. This would have been like 2009, probably. So she had a lot going on that year. So I can understand why she was ready for a break. Yeah, absolutely. She realized that working and working and working wasn't going to be enough for her. And within that time, she traveled to India and the Himalayas, which that's so awesome. I think she'd been to India at least once before. I think so. Yeah. And she kind of treated this time, this like year period as a great investment that made her realize that she was ready for something different. And then she reconnected with Will soon after that, Will Copelman, who is the father of her babies. Yes. And she continued to travel with Will for about a year. And says that there was kind of an unspoken thought that if they wanted to start a family, they'd better do it right away. Um, And about that, she said, I just knew that's what I wanted to do. I couldn't imagine being in yet another trailer in another strange location, being somebody else. I'd done that for 35 years. I thought, let's try something new. And I was so ready and excited. Love that. Yeah. She really did like plan this thing out like in such a different way I mean I think parts of her career have been very well thought out but there's definitely a lot that she's just kind of gone with the flow and (laughs) at the moment totally (laughs) let's get into her first baby Olive like we said Olive was born on September 26 2012 which is September Mm -hmm. 26 is the day that this episode came out which is why we timed it that way (laughs) yes happy birthday Olive (laughs) yeah it was uh, my daughter Mila it was her idea to do an episode about Drew being a mom and uh she said it quite a few months ago and it would just we just passed Mother's Day and I was like shoot we missed that but let's put it on the books for Olive's birthday so we've been planning this one for a while I love that so much that your daughter had the idea for yeah. us to talk about motherhood. <laughs> it's so sweet. It's all full circle. <laughs> yes. Um, and just thought it'd be fun to mention that Drew decided on the name Olive because she and Will were looking up what size her growing baby was and the fruit for the week was an olive and <laughs> they just loved that name. And I love it so much. My last name has olive in it. <laughs> And it's funny that it like really doesn't have anything to do with all of the other reindeer. It's just like a weird little coincidence. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. I'm sure some part of her subconsciously like likes the name because of that though. (laughs) So for most of her pregnancy, she just stayed home. She took it really easy. She like said she cleaned out a lot of things. I think this is when she did her storage unit clean out. Oh yeah. (laughs) She learned how to cook, especially soups. She planted an herb garden. So just that kind of nesting stuff. Um, She compared it to how cats supposedly tear up a bunch of paper right before they give birth. That's how she (laughs) felt. But she didn't completely stop working. She hosted a season of Turner Classic Movies, The Essentials. Um, And then she also started Flower Beauty during this time. So she was doing some stuff, just stuff that like allowed her to be home more. Yeah. Um, She said about Flower Beauty, I was creating a little girl and thinking about what women deserved and wanted at the same time, which I love. Cute. (laughs) Yeah. Very cute. Um, She never actually confirmed her pregnancy publicly while she was pregnant. (laughs) Nice burp, Bill. (laughs) (laughs) But there were definitely like at the official wedding photos, it was kind of obvious like Will was touching her belly, Um, but they never like put out a statement or anything, which is kind of funny. People just sort of had to know. (laughs) But we also saw paparazzi pictures, right? Yeah. Unfortunately, when she came out of the doctor's office once holding one of the ultrasound photos, paparazzi pictures got. Yeah. And that's like the story broke that way. And she was really upset about it. Because I don't remember being surprised when the wedding photos were released. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, we learned in the way that she didn't want us to learn. (laughs) I know, unfortunately. God, I'm glad you thought of that. I forgot that happened. Yeah. So this is a quote. 
I've been telling myself to be calm, calm in crisis, calm in the morning, calm, calm, calm. I have approached so many things in my life with such intensity that I want to approach motherhood with dedication and focus. Love that. Yeah, me That's too. a good reminder for me all the time. <laughs> yeah, totally. Especially calm in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Luckily, Jason wakes up in a happy mood every morning and like Aww. goes around the house singing and stuff. And it really helps me not be such a cranky person in the morning. <laughs> So some of the things that she said she would do differently with Olive than her own upbringing, I thought this was interesting and a fun thing to note. Mm -hmm. They include schedules, chore charts, family meals, consistency, boundaries, routine, trust, and endless joy. Oh, speaking (laughs) of joy. I love boundaries. That's a huge one. Oh, I know. I she's talked many times about how she didn't even know what that meant. She didn't even understand the concept of it. Like, yeah. I mean, to be fair, boundaries, the idea of it feels like a buzzword. Yeah. I I wish it didn't feel that way, but huge, huge. I mean, we know she didn't have them as a child at all. No, (laughs) none of this stuff really like it's just wild. And I really appreciate that she's been able to be like, here's all the stuff I know is missing from my life. And I'm going to make sure my child doesn't miss out on this I guess there's something hard about though because sometimes it's like people go so hard the other way yeah you know like of what they were they're like I will never but the things that she wanted to pick up were healthy things I think I do too (laughs) yeah um so there's a wildflower chapter so Drew's book wildflower called dear olive in it, she talks about trying to have everything perfect before Olive <laughs> arrived. And then Olive was nine days late. So just that thing, it's like, you can't control everything. Yeah. She even says that she like skipped over whatever astrological sign she would have had, which I guess would have been Virgo, right? Uh-huh. And instead she's a Libra. <laughs> that's cute. Yeah. So that's kind of a funny thing. Like, does that fit her personality? Does Drew feel like she's a typical Libra? Yeah. <laughs> You know, um, she also said she had anxieties and was obsessed over controlling everything when Olive was a newborn. I can only imagine what that would be like. <laughs> oh, my God. You know, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Drew also says Olive is pretty serious, very smart, capable, and independent. Even though we don't really know Olive, obviously. Right. I do feel like. There is something about her. We've always noticed she's like a lot more, um, it doesn't seem like Olive wants attention. Mm, She's more reserved. More reserved. Yeah, Yeah. I would agree. And to carry us out for this section, here is a clip from the audiobook of Wildflower about Olive. I love being your mom and figuring out what you need. Even if what you need is your independence sometimes and for me not to dance around the room. But I will not stop. I will just have my instincts sharp and ready to know what the moment requires and have a large arsenal from which to pull. Howdy, Howdy, Drewbies. Drewbies. We want to tell you about our sponsor, Positive Medium. We've actually been clients of theirs for at least 10 years, and they take care of all of our website needs for the Drewzeum.com. They offer custom web design and professional coding, search engine optimization, marketing, and hosting. So we've been hosted by them, but we've also been able to take advantage of a lot of their expertise in these other areas as well. Absolutely. So customer service is the biggest draw for us with this company. They have saved our site literally from obliteration quite a yep. few times. But then they also help us with minor issues in just like literally a matter of minutes. So if we have like a coding question or just like something on the back end we can't figure out, we reach out to them and we get an answer back and the issue is solved within moments. We're so excited that Positive Medium is allowing us to offer our listeners 25% off managed WordPress hosting plans using our promo code DREW, D-R-E-W, of course. Um, And if you want to take advantage of this, visit positivemedium.com. We really, really vouch for these people. They've been so great to us and will continue to be great to us, I I can only imagine. (laughs) I mean, they're great by offering this to our listeners. So take advantage. Again, it's promo code DREW, of course. (laughs) So let's move on to Drew's second baby, Frankie. So (laughs) little Frankie was born on April 22nd, 2014, which is Earth Day, which I think is so perfect for Drew. (laughs) Yeah. 
<laughs> totally. <laughs> so we had a pretty fun explanation for Olive's name. This is what Drew said about Frankie's name. She said, it's not the most interesting story. It was just a name that came to my husband and I a few months before she was born. And we were sort of like, I think this is it. And then we gave ourselves room to change our mind, but we never did. And then she said that her mother-in-law's maiden name is Franco. And she said she loves her so much that it reminds me of her as well. So that's really cute. Yeah, that is super cute. Um, She also said she didn't want another name that sounded like a color or food because of Olive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like the example she said, like she loved the name Pepper, which I could totally see Drew having a daughter named Pepper. Me too. But that Olive and Pepper together sounded a little ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> but Frankie has such a cute name. Oh, I know. For some reason, I always love specifically names that sound like like boy names for girls. Me too. Like Charlie and Frankie have that similar kind of vibe. Charlie McGee, fire starter. <laughs> <laughs> Frankie McGee. <laughs> uh, okay. Um. So Drew has said that she found being an only child very lonely. She hated it. She always wanted Olive to have at least one sibling. Drew herself said she had wanted a sibling even more than she'd wanted parents, which is so (laughs) heartbreaking. Yeah. Uh, And she wanted them to be able to roll their eyes at their parents together like Rusty and Audrey Griswold from vacation. (laughs) I love that. (laughs) I know. And she hoped that they would have a bond and feel like, quote, I've got someone in this world, which is so sweet. That is really sweet. And I have two siblings, as do you. So we don't know what yeah only childness feels like and drew's especially was so lonely like i can yeah makes sense she spent a lot of time relating to adults (laughs) yeah a lot (laughs) yeah a lot a lot (laughs) she basically planned on having the kids back to back plus she wanted them to be close in age so kind of makes sense like also be able to relate to each other she found her second pregnancy easier because she was less terrified of every single thing (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Unlike her first pregnancy, she just felt more prepared because she'd already had everything she'd need from Olive. And then she said about that, it's all about hand-me-downs and room sharing. (laughs) (laughs) Super cute. Yeah. (laughs) Um, While she was pregnant, she would point to her belly and teach Olive to say baby or sister. And she bought her books about being a big sister. She said when Olive met Frankie for the first time she looked right at her and said Frankie sister and started touching Aww. her I know and Drew took a photo of them meeting and thought Olive you must look out for Frankie always so oh, sweet I love that I know and Olive like always wanted to feed her or be near her all the time so she was very into it oh that's so cute and of course in Drew's book Wildflower there is a chapter dearest Frankie Um, In the chapter, she talks about how she believed that everything would be okay when Frankie was born. Um, She describes her as sweet and joyful and very into food. (laughs) Um, She talks about how they like to laugh together and that they really get each other's sense of humor, which again, like I see Frankie as seeming so much like a little Drew. Yeah. She said that Frankie was very clingy and wanted to be near Drew all the time. (laughs) She must be pointing that out because Olive is so like independent. Yeah. You know, it's such opposites. Yep. Most people I know who have two kids, especially if they're close in age, they seem like they're total opposites from each other. So it's just funny that these two also seem to follow that pattern. Totally. (laughs) And here's a little snippet from Drew's book, Wildflower, about Miss Frankie. I was built for this. In fact, I look forward to it. I will always do my best to present the high road in life, teach you to be grateful, polite, and humble. It means everything to me. But you are my teacher too. And so far, you have shown me that to love without end is perfectly safe. My heart grew bigger the day you were born, and it grows bigger Every time I see your smile. As far as having any more children back in the day, obviously things are a little different now, but back in the day, Drew said, I think I'd like to have more in the back of my head. I'm already timing if I was to have another, when that would occur. And she also said that her and Will were definitely leaving the door open to more but alas, (laughs) not meant to be. Yes. 
Olive and Frankie do have a half brother though, because Will and his wife have a new baby. So they do have another sibling. But yeah, let's talk about ways that Drew has talked about family life and motherhood. Okay. This is a quote I liked. She said, I do obsessively create families and enjoy them and take pride in them. And now I actually have a real legal blood family and it's the coolest. It feels very much like all the things I put an effort in along the way, which is to try and make something that's stable and happy and functions well. And she also said in the same article, this was from Allure in 2013, I'm glad I lived such a full life before I settled down into a family because I got to enjoy it and get it out of my system. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, she did. She did lots of living. Yeah, I can't really imagine her having kids any earlier because it just wouldn't have fit into her world at that time. Yeah, it's so interesting to imagine it. I was going to say just her talking about having a real legal blood family. Well, I have a couple thoughts. Okay. One of them is we have talked about many times how she creates families. Yeah. This is something that on sets she would feel like it was a family it started with et <laughs> yes and then the little girl actually talks about that it was like kind of heartbreaking like the movie would end and so would that family yeah but then i also had a thought about like you know how people say she's a nepo baby and it's yeah. like yeah she didn't really have a relationship with her blood family that she was proud of or that you know yeah. felt like the right kind of bond to her except her bond to her like ancestors which is so kind of cool to think about too right almost like an imaginary thing like she probably feels more connected to her grandfather than she did to either of her half siblings who she didn't know right yeah totally I love that she mentioned this like creating families finding your tribe Mm -hmm. I feel like she in in that blog post about motherhood because she had that blog post oh yeah we probably should have referenced that for this episode (laughs) we can link to it okay Um, okay. but I feel like in that she talks about like not everyone has a traditional family yeah so here she is like for once creating a quote-unquote traditional family yeah I hate to like go there but part of the reason that she was so devastated by her Mm -hmm. divorce was the loss of what she thought was going to be that quote-unquote traditional family I was just thinking that yeah but thankfully drew had already kind of created those ways of like finding family yeah another quote from 2014 um, when you have a family everything changes radically you walk out of the house and it's a wizard of oz moment everything's (laughs) in technicolor and things will never be the same again that's great (laughs) (laughs) yeah She's been asked, of course, if she would let her daughters act. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, they come from this illustrious line of actors. But Drew has said no, not as kids. She wants them to be kids as long as possible. She obviously Mm -hmm. knows what it's like to be a child actor. Mm -hmm. Um, She said she would support it if they wanted to do it once they were 18. But until then, they can do summer theaters and school plays. And she's also said that she would love for them to have like summer jobs and internships and to learn responsibility of like, you have to be here at a certain time. Love that. Not as a child actor. (laughs) Yeah, that makes sense. Um, Her daughters call her films mom movies. So cute. (laughs) It is really cute. It's, I can't even imagine being the child of somebody as famous as Drew is and being like, yeah, that's just my mom. You know? I know. It's just like, that's just what it is. <laughs> yep. Her original choices to show them were E.T., Ever After, Charlie's Angels, Donnie Darko, and Fifty First Dates. I find Donnie Darko interesting. Yeah. Do you want another reason? Yeah. Um, she said, this was a movie my partner and I produced that just wasn't getting made. Kids way cooler than me like this film. And I think that's awesome. It's like, maybe cool. it's like to get some cred. <laughs> yeah. I think it'd be kind of cool if we posted a picture of that list because sure. in the magazine in style 2013, she describes why she chose each of these films. So good call. We'll include it. Cool. Um, she has said that she is a disciplinarian, not a softie, because she thinks it shows that you care. Again, that was something lacking in her life as a child. Mm-hmm. But she also still tries to be the silliest mom who ever lived. <laughs> <laughs> she said she's always making up silly songs and dances. Do you remember when Pink was on the show last year? And yeah. They were talking something about, oh, Drew started singing some song about like chicken. We We actually put it in the episode. But yeah, she starts singing it. And then I feel like Pink says something like, you're weird if you don't do that. Yeah. (laughs) 
And it seemed like Frankie and Olive were in the audience during that, like in Drew's oh. sort of reference. It was like filmed on Drew's actual birthday. It wasn't the birthday episode, but it was her oh, actual birthday. Oh, got so it. That could be why they were there. Anyway, this is a fun quote. She said, I'm the mom with the kitchen on fire and food on our faces, and we're happy singing and playing. <laughs> That's cute. Just one other kind of thing along these lines. She's been very clear that she is not their friend. She's their mom. And that was always like a fuzzy thing with Jade. Like, are you my manager, my friend, my like party club buddy? Speaking of (laughs) boundaries lacking. Right. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, she also says that the holidays are a huge deal to her. I think we've talked about this before a little bit. Yeah. Um, She likes the traditions of getting a Christmas tree and opening the box of the ornaments every year, watching a Charlie Brown Christmas. She's, she said that she gives them vacations instead of gifts, which I kind of love because she's like giving them experiences. Of course, that was like a stupid clickbaity headline when that came out. Like, Drew Barrymore won't give her children presents. (laughs) Oh, God. (laughs) Anyway. I have such fond memories of like Christmas trees and ornaments every year, like. I love that she's doing that with her kids. Yeah. And I think it was, must've been in our, all of the other reindeer episode, but um, she talked about how the, really the only sense of tradition she had during the holidays as a child was the like TV specials that would come on. Like that was the only thing that was consistent for her. I mean, at least there's something. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) That's why those TV specials are there to a weird extent, you know, but it's great that she's been able to kind of turn that around and make sure her daughters have something more than that (laughs) yeah and I love that she includes one like Mm -hmm. using a Charlie Brown Christmas it's like some people it's what's that film with the kid in the pink thing oh Christmas story (laughs) yeah I know that one was never like a thing we watched growing up so I have no for me I have no connection to it (laughs) give me home alone all day any day (laughs) Uh, there we go so you've got one yep (laughs) um she has often said that she would love for the girls to take over running flower beauty one day and you know it was definitely mm-hmm. like we mentioned above that she was pregnant with Olive when she started it so it's like a very romantic idea to her and I think she likes the idea of like passing it down and having them run it but Drew's empire is something not to scoff at that's yeah, for sure yeah she has decided to keep the girls out of the public eye as much as she can um she no longer shares photos on Instagram of the girls which I didn't really notice but she never really did it a ton yeah on all of our platforms we also don't really share photos of the girls except for ones that she's like posed with them at events or that she shared herself um and even in the episode gallery won't really have a ton of pictures of the girls unless it's something that was kind of like public yeah there's a couple from wildfire we'll share um a couple from the people magazine spread she did when the girls were born but we'll keep it pretty simple and uh, give them that privacy that she is requesting No paparazzi. Another thing I thought was cool. These are important things to give to her kids. She said, always being on time, being there when I say I'm going to be there, creating a real stable home to make your kids feel safe is everything. It's just, it's so hard to read these without like knowing exactly it's coming from her not having these things. Yeah. And she also had said, I had times in my life when I needed a mom, I'm going to be there for my kids. True. (laughs) And she also said, my favorite thing about being a mom is just what a better person it makes you on a daily basis. And this is coming from Drew Barrymore, who, like, I would say (laughs) is primarily a good person. And is very concerned with being a good person every day. (laughs) She also said, I think motherhood makes me think about everything I do. I used to act first and think second. Being a mom makes me think first and act second. I would argue that she's been thinking thinking, thinking about motherhood rather than acting on it forever. Like we said. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Careful, calculated decision. (laughs) Uh, We're going to summarize and kind of take us out with an audio clip from Wildflower. This is from the chapter that is very cleverly titled Postpartum Me (laughs) instead of Postpartum. (laughs) And this is sort of how she sums up being a mom. You show them that you love them endlessly. You devote yourself, you sacrifice, you parent also by example. The way you live and the things you achieve and the way you behave will be more evident than trying to convince them of anything. I am a stay-at-home mom some days and a working mom others, but I am always first and foremost a mom. 
when we mothers worry or guilt trip ourselves or try to convince ourselves we will ever be the same after having kids, we are missing the point because we won't be the same. I feel like I was born the day my kids were and that my life before was only there to gain wisdom for them. The point is, you do your best. You do your best every day. You do it, and you do it for them. Oh, oof. So that is so sweet. I could totally visualize some of those, like exactly what her mannerisms were when she was saying <laughs> I was picturing her face yeah. <laughs> in all of this. And like, I feel like she's like, she's got that stern mm-hmm. voice going, but yeah. like, you know, you can almost like hear it like cracking a little bit. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so good. Real. So yeah, what a great note to go out on. Absolutely. And it's just so it comes from such a deep and lovely place. Oh, Drew. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I maybe we're not like emphasizing it enough, but this is like being a mom is absolutely the number one most important thing to her in her entire life that she's ever done. <laughs> like so yeah. this is kind of a big deal episode. I hope we treated it with the love and care it deserves. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what's the quote that I'm thinking of? I think I don't it's know. I think it's uh, uh, Kate Hudson. Oh, you treated um, people with tender care and kindness. <laughs> Back full circle to you smell like flowers. <laughs> Such tender care and kindness. You, you smell, smell like flowers. flowers. <laughs> I love that. Literally, I came back to the exact same quote. Uh, okay. <laughs> So happy birthday, Olive, and happy 11-year anniversary to Drew of becoming a mom, the most important thing in her life. It's amazing. It's been 11 years already. What the heck? Crazy. That does Ah. not feel right. (laughs) (laughs) Um, We are going to have a little bit of a funky schedule, right? Maybe we'll have one more episode, and then we might take a little break while you are vacationing. I will be vacationing. Yes. I love it, you lucky lady. (laughs) (laughs) Come around. Tune in. Like, you follow us on Instagram at how do you drew pod. We always keep things uh, up to date. If we're going to skip a week, we let you guys know. Yep. Of course, you can also follow us at Drew Zam on Instagram. And mm-hmm. don't forget those rate, review, subscribe things on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Keep our star ratings up. <laughs> yes. Yes. We appreciate all the reviews that we get, but you know, it never hurts to get more. Yeah. Visit our website at howdoyoudrew.com to check out the episode pages for each episode. Send listener mail to howdoyoudrewpod at gmail.com, one of the many ways you can reach out to us. My question to take us out this week is, what's your favorite thing about being a mother of daughters? See, this is the serious question I was preparing myself for. (laughs) This is kind of like very shallow surface level thing to say, but, um, I just don't know boys. Like my whole life is girls surrounded by girls. I have like only sisters. I have a jillion female cousins. I've only known girls, 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 girls. So Mm -hmm. the idea of having a boy always like frightened me a bit. I'm sure I would have figured it out, but to (laughs) me, sort of like Drew has said that like her karma was just that she was going to have girls like mm-hmm. I've always felt like there's no other option. Of course, I'm going to have girls. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess my favorite thing is that it just feels right. It just feels natural to me. It's just Aww. what I know. Yeah. I love that. And it's, I almost was going to say like, I have two brothers, but my mom has only sisters. So there's part of me that can only imagine having boys. Right. But then I feel like part of me would like be able to carry on a strong woman legacy if I had a girl. Oh, that's cool. That actually, that's one of the things that um my husband, Jason, if you guys don't know, that's who I'm talking about. Both his grandmothers were very strong, awesome women. And there's other like um... really cool, awesome women in his family, like Olympians and stuff. Oh my God. <laughs> Literally strong. Um, So he like loved that we are having a girl when we had Elle because he felt like he had this legacy of awesome women in his family. So it's pretty Aww. cool. Speaking of awesome women, I feel like we're we're kind of awesome women. <laughs> yeah, I could see you going either way though. Like you're more balanced than I am. I could see you having a boy or a girl or both. Like it make me, you know what I mean? It doesn't seem all like the idea of me having a boy seems astronomically weird. <laughs> yes. I feel like you what you've said about it and then we'll and then we'll end it, but I feel like what you've said is like you just you literally have never even thought that you would ever have a boy. Like it's like 
<laughs> you are you like when you were pregnant both times you're just like of course I'm having a girl yeah there's like no way other way it could especially go especially <laughs> with Mila I remember it being like I literally would say like I know the sky is blue and I know I'm having a girl like it's just a fact <laughs> I love that so much. <laughs> That's a fun note to end on. <laughs> Thank you everybody for listening and we will see you next Tuesday. All right. Thanks guys. Bye-bye. This episode of the How Do You Drew podcast was researched and produced by Ashley and Anne from thedrewseum.com with help from our sponsor, Positive Medium. Special thanks to Matt Costa for our lovely theme song, Roxy Prima for our adorable logo, and last but not least, Drew Barrymore and all the Drewbies who love her. We do this for you. Thank Thank you. you.